there and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Allie and today I'm going to be sharing with you some great ways that you can incorporate vintage items into your home and sentimental pieces. And what I mean by that are items that you've maybe thrifted or items that mean something to you that have been maybe handed down to you from an ancestor, a grandparent, or a good friend, just something that means a lot to you. A lot of times we can get a little bit discouraged when working with these types of items because we may not know how to move them into our home in a way that feels cohesive or in a way that makes sense. We may worry that they won't match with our decor, whether that be modern or a little bit more traditional, transitional, whatever it is. Sometimes we can feel discouraged and think that we can't pull these items into our home in a way that makes sense, but I'm gonna show you today how to do that. I'm also gonna be taking you with me for a quick little trip to the thrift shop and showing you some items, pointing out some ways that you can use thrifting items. So if you don't have sentimental items, let's say that you maybe don't have anything that's been passed on to you from a grandparent or a loved one or anything like that, I don't want you to, to feel discouraged or feel like this doesn't apply to you. I actually am going to show you in the thrift shop ways that you can find items that still are thrifted or antique and still can bring meaning into your home. My goal in this video is to show you how to do it in a meaningful way so that your home still feels like you and has that unique spin on it that gives that feeling of authenticity and helps it to feel like it's distinctly yours. If you like videos like this, please don't forget to hit subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and drop me a comment to let me know what you liked. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so we are gonna get started in this little corner that I have in my guest room. You may have seen it in my last video where I did my guest room makeover, but I didn't go into detail because I wanted to show you more here how I got started. So I encourage you, if you don't already have a corner like this, to carve one out in some space of your home. As you can see here, I just have two shelves, two simple black shelves, and then I started it off with this plant up top. This is an angel wing begonia plant that one of my good friends gave to me. She cultivated it for me during a really difficult time in my life and gave it to me when I was in a better place. And I just love how it looks in this corner. She's beautiful. And even if you're not a green thumb, you can get an artificial plant, but greenery always brings a warmth to a space. So now I'm gonna add in this beautiful stitch work that my great aunt Carol made. My great aunt Carol lived to be 98 years old. She was like another grandmother to us, all the kids in my family, and she had a real talent for creativity. As you can see, look at this gorgeous detail in the stitch work. She made one of these for every single season. So you may have seen in my spring decorating video how I switched out the winter one that she did, which was really beautiful, and changed it out for this gorgeous spring one. And you can see the willow tree and even the little ridges and ripples in that lake just bring such a peaceful vibe to this corner that I absolutely love having it here. So again, you can see the tulips there and the robins, everything about it just screams spring. And I think it just adds a really unique cozy feel to this corner and it makes me feel at home right in this room. Next up, I'm just adding this little vintage sign that I had found a few months back. It's got a beautiful quote from Rumi there. And again, just adds some more serenity to this little corner. A lot of times in the morning, I'll come here before the kids get up and just have some quiet time. And these peaceful little touches make me feel warm and cozy in my space. And now I'm adding this really cute peace sign that I found, which I linked for you, as well as this little sound bowl that I linked for you. Again, just kind of adding that really natural kind of meditative vibe to the space. I have a couple of books here. I just have a book on Tai Chi and then I have a meditation journal. Any kind of books that you like, books always bring texture to a space. And then I'm finishing it off with this beautiful Himalayan salt lamp candle, which I got on Amazon. I linked it for you and just adding a battery operated tea light. And I'm sure you can tell that it really just adds a warmth to this space especially any time that you can add a little bit of flickering light from a candle, brings movement to the space, and just creates a really beautiful, cozy vibe in your home.
I'm bringing you with me really quick to one of my favorite local thrift shops called The Sleepy Poet here in Charlotte. And going thrift shopping, even if you don't buy anything, is just such a fun way to sort of see what it is that you're drawn to, kind of get away from the regular decor stuff that we see all the time and the trends, just to go in and kind of see what speaks to you. So if you're looking for a stitch work piece, there are tons of them there. Just take a look and see, again, what speaks to you, what you like, and they've got tons of great prices there. They also even have these moody sort of landscape pieces that are in style right now. You can even get some of these sort of vintage artwork pieces and just buy yourself a frame and you'll be good to go. So next up is one of my favorite, probably the favorite piece in my home. It is this beautiful vintage antique bar cart and it was my grandmother's actually. And she always had it in her little apartment and loved it. And after she passed, my mom had asked me if I wanted to take it in and I said, of course. So I just gave it a little bit of a cleanup because it definitely needed a little bit of love and care. But once I had it cleaned, it was shiny and almost felt brand new. And I love having a bar cart in our home, even before they became popular. I just think it's such a nice thing to have. You can bring it out when you're hosting parties. And we have ours sitting in this corner space in our front room. So I'm just gonna show you really easily how I styled it. I did a couple planters. I linked some great options for you. We added this little whiskey decanter set that my husband got from his parents for a gift. So another sentimental piece layered on top of it. And then on the bottom, you'll see that I'm adding in this cocktail smoker. A couple of years ago, I got it for my husband when the family members got really into like smoking old fashions and whiskey drinks and things like that. So we always take it out during the holidays. And in the meantime, it lives here on the bottom of my grandma's bar cart, which feels very fitting. This set of vintage glasses is actually the favor from my parents' wedding 53 years ago, I think. And again, just adds a really cool vintage touch. Love having it down there. And I love that it's specific to my family and that I'm displaying it and found a place for it instead of just sort of tucking it away in a cabinet. And we also have gigantic families on both sides. So we never really felt like putting a formal dining room fit for our family. So we put a whiskey room. We made this room into like a whiskey room, cocktail room, kind of a place where we go and hang before we have a holiday dinner. And then once we do have a holiday dinner, we just kind of line up some tables in our main eating area and everybody sits there. So again, I'm bringing you back to the thrift shop, just showing you a cool option for a vintage bar cart. They actually had several of them there to choose from. These are some really cool glasses that I saw. I feel like they would be great if you have more of a rustic vibe or maybe a mountain house. Totally would love these glasses. And then these are some water glasses, which I thought were really pretty. They have that thick stem at the bottom. Those would also look great on a bar cart. Next up is this vintage bench. If you've been following me, you know how much I love this vintage bench. I scored it a couple of months back at that same thrift shop and I'm just totally in love with it. Just styled it with some simple candles and two vases that are different heights to just add a little bit of depth to the space. And I feel like it is so fitting and it really brings character and warmth to that hallway. Back at the thrift shop, I found these really cool wood pieces. And this was one piece that I tried to walk away from, I'm not even kidding, probably five times, and I just could not leave it there. It is a vintage mortar made out of elm wood. And I likely wouldn't use this as a mortar. It wouldn't function for me that way probably because you can see it's a little bit damaged inside, but I thought it would go perfect in this corner of my kitchen. It's the perfect height. I love that it breaks up that white and grays that we have in our kitchen and just adds a really warm touch to it. I love that it's vintage. You can see all the character inside of it. It's got worn edging and it's totally asymmetrical and just really cool looking. So I'm just styling it with some simple stems here. These are artificial succulent stems. I added some links for you so that you have some options there, but you can see that I'm not going too crazy with this. I'm just making sure that I bend my stems because when you do that, it looks really natural. And then I'm just tucking in this cascading succulent. So two different types of succulents here. When you bring wood elements like this into your space, whether they're vintage or not, 
they really do bring a sense of warmth to the space and they kind of take that sterile feeling away and they make your home feel more cozy. And you'll see in just a minute that I'm going to style it and pull out one of my mortars that I actually do use. I have a mortar and pestle that I got from World Market and I use that all the time when I'm grinding spices. So I'm gonna tuck this into the corner and then I'm gonna style it with that mortar which is a really good tip for your kitchen as well, is to use items, have them at the ready. You don't wanna feel cluttered, so you wanna do it in a very intentional way, but you do wanna be okay with bringing items out that you use every day and allowing those items to double down and work for you as a stylish piece. And the thrift shop also had these really gorgeous wooden trays. You can use trays, if you've watched my last video, you can tell that I really love using trays in my space. They're a really great way to group items together that may not have normally gone together, but they make them look cohesive and like they belong there. So you can use things like these breadboards, cutting boards, any kind of wood trays that you find and then add those items onto them to bring, again, both warmth and function to your space. So in my family, it's always been a tradition to have a rooster in the kitchen. It's considered good luck. So I'm adding mine to this corner. I thrifted this rooster a long time ago and I'm going to use it to sort of make a moment out of this area and cover up an outlet with a cookbook. So here's an idea. If you have pieces that mean something to you and you want to see them every day, I'm going to show you what I did here in my closet. So I have this wall in my closet and I have these pieces in here, like for example, that canvas up top that I got from my kids, which I love. And I also wanted some place to have my jewelry pieces, some form of an organizer. So I got this organizer on Amazon and it has been a total game changer for me. I have a lot of necklaces of all different lengths and this one serves as such a good place for me to keep my necklaces so that they don't get tangled up and they actually look really pretty on my wall like this. It also helps me to accessorize better, honestly, because if they're out in my face, then I can see them easier. It's easier for me to sort of sift through them. So I linked the organizer for you and I have that in the center of my closet wall. Then over here, I have this mirror that is an antique. It was given to me also by my great aunt Carol, who I mentioned earlier. And I thought this was the perfect space for it because I love all the detail in it. See how it's got like this texture, beautiful texture to it. It's got this sort of distressed reddish color, orangish color kind of all throughout it. And I love having it in my closet because I needed a mirror in here for when I'm getting ready, you know, trying to see what jewelry pieces I'm gonna wear. And I hung it there in that corner and I thought it went perfectly. This is a serenity prayer that was in my great aunt Carol's house for years. I remember it ever since we were kids. And after she passed, a few months after she passed, my sister had come down to Charlotte because my daughter Penelope was diagnosed with leukemia. And my sister got out of the car after making the drive from New York to Charlotte. And this was the first thing she handed me. And it just means so much to me. First of all, because I've seen it my entire life and it's so familiar to me. And also because of what we were experiencing in that moment. And I clung to those words. And I really, again, wanted a space to hang that and to see it every day. So I'm adding it to that wall in my closet, which I visit every morning. And this is also a beautiful piece that she made for us for our wedding day when Greg and I got married. She was just really talented and really crafty. So I just wanted a, a place to honor her. And again, to have these pieces in my space so that I can see them every single day and they're not tucked away in a box or anything like that. This little sign, love you a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck. My great aunt Edie used to sing this song to me as a kid, and it's just something that I always remembered. So I bought it several years ago when I first saw it, and I'm gonna make a space for that on the collage wall as well. And then this sweet little sign that I bought that reminds me of my kids, and it's just a great reminder for me as a mom to have patience and to not let any of those little moments pass you by. So back at the thrift shop, I found another serenity prayer that was made in stitch work like my aunt made for us and just wanted to show you that they do have these things. So if you don't have anything that was passed along to you, you can most definitely find items like this in a thrift shop. And you can, you know, just sort of pretend this came from an ancestor or whatever the case is, these things make us feel good. And they have just little gentle spiritual reminders for us throughout the day. 
So now what I'm doing is I'm gonna use these three M strips because I don't wanna put more nails in the wall. And these things are honestly awesome. I use them whenever I can around my house. I think they can actually even hold up to like 12 or 16 pounds. So they're really strong and they're very easy to install. You just take the back off and it's got a really strong adhesive. So you just stick it to whatever it is that you're hanging. And then you place another piece over it with the two insides facing each other so that they Velcro in, they sort of make a clicking sound. And then you pull the backing off of those pieces and you just line it up and you place it wherever it is that you want items hung. So I'm just gonna go in now and I sort of did a little bit, I, you saw me just a minute ago trying to figure out where I wanted things. I think it's important when you're doing a collage wall like this to not get too caught up in perfectly measuring or you know, trying to make things too similar or symmetrical. A collage wall like this really should just come from the heart. It doesn't need to be perfect. You wanna place things at eye level or wherever you feel they look best and it's okay to have them be off-centered. I love how it turned out and it feels really good to get these items that I've been hanging on to sort of out and onto the collage wall. I feel like I've done a good job of honoring these things that mean so much to me. And this little sign, Press for Champagne, I got it years ago. I love it. It just makes me smile. It adds a little bit of fanciness to the space. I've been pressing it and pressing it for years and no champagne is coming, <laughs> but it just makes me happy and makes me feel good when I'm getting ready in the morning. And overall just adds a little bit of personality to the wall. Another good luck tradition in our family is to always make sure that you have in your home an elephant with the trunk up. It's considered to be good luck. So I have this piece that I've had for years and years now. I have it at the bottom of my bookshelf and I put it here along with some books that came from my grandma's house and my great aunt's house. They lived together actually. This is a picture of my grandmother and my grandfather, and I haven't found the right frame for it yet, but I have it down here and I just love it. I love the way that she's looking at him. It's just such a sweet picture. And again, I just have it out so that I can see it, so that it's in my space. And I've got some other pictures of them as well. The one on the left is again of my grandmother and my grandfather. And then the one next to it is a picture of my great aunt Carol, on her wedding day to my great uncle Joe, who was also like a grandfather. And in the corner of that picture, all the way to the right is my mom. She was their flower girl. So again, these are just things that mean a lot to me. This is a candle that my sister got for me. I love it, it's so funny and cute. And it's set upon a stack of books here that she also gave to me. And then these are just some pictures in frames. These are pictures of me and my husband with my grandmother on my sister's wedding day, and then a picture that I have with my sister, my mom, and my grandma. Again, these frames don't have to match. You can just mix things up and place them on a bookshelf. And again, I see them every day and I love them. Next up are these pieces that I have that, again, mean a lot to me. This is a picture of my father's town in Italy where he came from. And I visited this place with him back in 2018. My sister and I went and met my dad in Rome, and then we took the three and a half hour bus drive all the way up the mountain to Intradacqua, which is the name of his mountain town. It's a very small mountain town. And I bought this in a gift shop there, and I've been looking for the right place to display it. I knew that I wanted to have it out somewhere, but blue isn't really the color in my home. So I'll show you what I did with it in just a second. Also, this is a piece that we always had growing up. So I come from a big family. We must have gotten this on a vacation. I want to say to like Hershey Park or something, but it's got all of our names on it. Unfortunately, we lost my mom's walnut years ago, but it's got my mom and my dad up top and then all my siblings. So my brothers, my sister, and then there's me at the bottom. And it's just a cute little rustic piece that my parents gave me a few years back after they moved. And then this sign here is something that I bought last year from Amazon. It's this cute little kitchen witchery sign, and it just shows you what herbs are good for what type of thing. So this is a little bit of folklore. I personally just like these kitschy little touches, and I was really just, again, looking for a space to kind of put these misfit items, but these items that mean a lot to me. 
So I went and grabbed my 3M strips and I found this wall inside our pantry and I decided to just make a little bit of a collage wall with these three items. So I went ahead and I put up the picture of Intradaqua there on the right. That was a bigger one, so I knew it was gonna feel heavier. So I wanted to place that sort of um, in the right and by itself. And then you can see that I put the kitchen witchery above it to the left slightly. And then I'm gonna take this smaller walnut circle and place it to the left and below. So I kind of made like this sideways triangular shape with it. And I'm sure as I go, I will add things to this wall. Never really thought about hanging anything here, but now that I have it, I totally love it. And my father's mother was an excellent cook. So I feel like now every time I'm getting ingredients from my pantry, I think of her. Here's another example of an elephant with its trunk up. We have this elephant in the main living space of our home. I got it from the store at home and I really love it. I love its hammered texture. I love that it's very elegant, it's elongated. It just feels really cool in our space. And I styled it with this natural wooden bowl, which I linked for you on Amazon. And then I also wanted to show you that while I was at the thrift shop, I saw this pretty cool vintage leather elephant there. So again, go to the thrift shop for more inspiration. They have so many things. I almost picked up one of these small wooden bowls because, and I might go back and get it, but I was thinking of using it for a soap dish in the bathroom. And then I also, for another idea for you, you could even collect vintage rolling pins, like these cool ones here. And then you can buy a vase or a vessel like this one that you can thrift. This is an antique Chinese water pot. That would look really cool on a kitchen counter with some vintage rolling pins tucked inside them. So now we're moving upstairs to my son's room. His name is Ciro, and he was named after his great grandfather on my husband's side. So we knew when he was born and we wanted to make something for a feature wall in his room, we decided to start with this little light up battery operated C, which I got on Amazon. They come in every letter of the alphabet and I linked it for you. And then what we did is we went to Lowe's and we just got a few pieces of wood, just plain wood, and we don't really know what we're doing. We just, you don't have to know what you're doing is my point in telling you that. We just went and actually just like painted them, got some stain, took a hammer, beat them up a little bit. And then we have all these pieces that were from Ciro's great grandfather's tackle box. He used to love fishing. So we just wanted, again, a cool way to kind of display the items that meant so much to him especially in my son's room since he's his namesake. So we just took some wood glue and things like staples and we just stuck them up here on this wall and we love how it turned out. It just is a really cute feature in his wall. He's eight years old now and he still loves it in his room. This is a little box that my sister-in-law made for my son that just has pictures of the original Ciro and he was married to a woman named Etta that that's their great grandmother and just like little tidbits like this little stories little ways that you can kind of make these things come to life and continue their legacy this right here is a lamp that was also from Ciro and Etta's house. My husband always remembers this when he was a kid because they used to spend their summers down in Florida with them. And we got this lamp and used it as a nightlight. So when my daughter was born, she was our firstborn, this was the first thing that went into her room. She's going to be 11 now soon and she still loves this, uses it every night as her nightlight. So back at the thrift shop, I'm just showing you some kind of cool, crazy things that I found. Again, somebody has the right space for these types of items. Even things like this that are beautiful, that could almost fit into anybody's home. You can just collect these, use them as a grouping. These would look great in a family room or on a mantle. You can even find just outrageous things like this bunny is the stuff of nightmares. I don't know who would need something, but... I just had to show it because you find the craziest things in thrift shops, but even the beautiful architectural pieces like these, I almost walked out with this and I honestly might go back and scoop it up because it's so cool. And again, just these beautiful things that you can bring into your home that tell a story. And I think especially if you have things from ancestors, I think that when you share these things, you're kind of saying that their life mattered. This last piece here is a seed cabinet. And if I had the space for this thing, I would have snatched it because it is beautiful. It's an antique seed cabinet 
Look at these drawers, they're nice and deep. I wish I had the space for it because again, it would have come all the way home with me. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I wanna know in the comments below, what was your favorite item from this video and what are some things that you have in your home that make it unique and specific to you? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any other videos and I will see you next time. Take care.